Dean. Playoff rugby, anything can happen. And we had a little bit of that today, but we're through to the League One Grand Final. Yeah, really impressed with the boys. We've been chasing almost a complete 80 minutes, and I thought today we were really, really close to that. Uh, I thought the 20 minutes spell after half time, the way we moved the ball, we challenged space. Some of our skill was, was incredible. I thought our spine really steered us around. And George Fonagan was challenged to get on the ball, and he got on the ball. And when he's on the ball, he's a massive threat. Um, so I was, I was really impressed. And then when you've got finishes like we have, we, we know we'll score points. So just, just really impressed. It's a tough place to come. Gary's done an outstanding job with, with Rochdale, and it's, it's a tough place to come and, and get a result. That first half was literally a, a, a you score, we score, or, or so it seemed. And we were maybe a little bit fortunate to go in at half time level if uh, Mackenzie Turner uh, intercepted uh, just in front of us here uh, and, and managed to score. And, and Matty kicks the, the touchline conversion. Yeah, there's a little bit of frustration. We tipped up on Jordan Andrade all week. We knew what, what was coming. We tipped him up scoring against us in exactly the same way, and he did it again. So there's a little bit of frustration. Uh, the fact that we'd seen it, we'd previewed it, we'd practised and they, they, he fell over again and scored. Uh, but on the flip side, I thought defensively we came up really well when they threw that, that shape at us and put us themselves in a position to do that. And then Mackenzie Turner was probably the quickest guy on the field, so as soon as he'd gone, we, we knew it was done. Um, so I think 12 all at half-time would have been a better reflection, but to go in 18 all, especially when we were a bit frustrated, I, I was quite happy with the resolve that that the lads are really, really happy with that. Did it change your team talk at half-time? No. Um, just just keeping them calm, because they were very, not not frantic, probably the wrong word, they were really emotional. Um, we had to take some emotion out of it. And we just had to go about doing our job, and we spoke about that all week. We don't try and fix other people. Just fix yourself and be calm and composed. And then we had that. And we knew then we could play shape. We knew what we spoke about. We'd done enough video. Um, and our skill execution, I, I was really, really impressed with that. We got a really good start to that second half where we, we played our set out. Noz looking like he's going for a 40-20 and ends up getting getting a drop out. Um, and that really put us on, our, on the front foot then to go and, and we scored off the back of that then. Yeah, we, um, we spoke at half-time, we were challenging for kicks and we, I don't know if that was an eagerness or, or just I've, I've got to score, but it, it, sometimes you don't have to score. Sometimes you've just got to manipulate where you turn the ball over and start to build pressure. And we did that with that kick and we was relaxed on our kick chase and again, Mackenzie Turner and Alfie Goddard got down there, did the work that they needed to do and, and we got the just rewards and on the back of that we played some, some good shape to score. So, probably listened to what everybody had to say, it wasn't me that was saying it, it was a, a collective effort with the leaders within the group. And when it comes to playoff time, the, the leaders within the playing group are, are really important and I thought they stood up today. Do you feel that we were we played a little, little bit calmer in that second half than, than what at times seemed a little bit of a frantic first half from both sides, to be fair? Yeah, I think we just stuck to our game plan a little bit better. We, we could see what was happening. Everything we, we previewed, did happen and that we just we just handled that the pressure potentially better than, than them and I thought our spine today was outstanding um, and they really reacted to what was again Scott an excellent away, away following they were so loud and, and proud and uh, they, they, did them, they did themselves and the, and the club justice today and getting to a grand final Talking of which next week again does, does the week look any different to any normal week? Um, Probably slightly because it is a it is a final, but we we're just going to go about our business as we always have done. The, the boys have a, a very set routine that that they follow and they go through, and we've just got to make sure that we do that again. Um, and if we we go there and perform, because don't get me wrong, Keith are a good side, and they'll be rightly going in as favourites. So we've just got to make sure that we go there and and perform, and the result will take care of itself if we we perform to the best of our ability. And personal congratulations to yourself. You've been nominated for League One Coach of the Year as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this opportunity, mate. It's, it's everybody, yourself, Jacko, Trouty, Jordan Fenterman, Sam, the, the backroom team. I, I just front it up, mate. And it's a, it's a team effort and everybody works hard and sacrifices a lot. It's nice to be nominated, uh, but you don't get anywhere without people surrounding you and, and with you and all sort of players, mate. 
it's it's a reward for them as well. It's not just us and, and the club and directors for showing some faith, and it's nice to repay that a little bit. So we're happy with that. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you at Keithley next week for the League One Grand Final. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers.